Welcome back, this is the Amber Jack, and today we got Gunslinger Suicidal Evacuation Point. It's a good map, it's a good map. I love whenever I start on this. Because it's, it's, it's raining Zeds. Out the front door, it's raining Zeds. Amen. I don't know the rest of the song. I'm not going to get copyright striked for going on. I don't think it's accurate enough for it to be uh, <laughs> caught up too easily anyway. But I do love when uh, when you come out that front door of uh, evacuation point and all the Zeds that are in the uh, the area just start like raining down on you. Oh, it's so good. Love it. It's so satisfying because they come from like there, they come from there, they come from like over here. It's just... And it's just Zeds everywhere, dude. It's, it's so satisfying. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but sometimes it does, and it's uh, it's a good, it's it's a fun feeling. That's why I like this map. Well, that, and then it also just kind of like fits pretty well into how I play the game. But um, it's like it's the right amount of difficulty. This map, you know, for me, it's not too easy. It's not too hard. It's 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 the right difficulty for me. Smack! Oh, I thought it might. I thought it might. I thought it might. It was a long shot, but sometimes, sometimes you gotta take those long shots and just hope, right? You know what? I bet. Oh. <laughs> I thought that maybe. I thought it could maybe possibly be a thing that happens. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe. But it wasn't a thing that happened. It wasn't. I plugged in my, uh, talked about it a while back, but I plugged in my battery bank. To see if we can get it charged up while Either it's sitting on the, uh, the cord that charges my animal. controller. My Xbox One Pro controller. And it's not really charging. It's still, still flashing at the first light. Hasn't even made it up to the second light. It's a 50... Or 60 watt hour battery, I think. Something like something in that range. Um, so it does take a while to charge, even even with like pretty fast charging. But it's been in there for like four or five days now, and and nothing's really coming of it. So it's it's a little bit peculiar for sure. But I'll leave it a little while longer. I, I want to have some way that I can charge it over here. Really, I don't know. I'm also just kind of still excited for. Uh, November 13th, when my VR headset finally comes. I can't wait. I'm like, I'm so excited. It, it's like all I'm thinking about lately. <laughs> really it is. Because uh, I've never used VR before. I know it's amazing. I know it's like a game changer for, for like video games, you know? Like literally, it changes the way you play the games. Um, like I know these things. I've never experienced it. I don't think I can hype myself up too much about it because uh, I think it's going to be so cool. I don't know, and, and it's not uh, it's not the highest resolution screen, you know. But uh, you know, maybe for the Quest 2 specifically, I could hype myself up too much for it. Um, but uh, I think that for VR as an experience overall, I don't think I can be hyping myself up too much for it. I think it is going to live up to any hype that I have for it just because uh, it's such a like I don't want to say revolutionary gaming experience because like I mean Nintendo even tried it back in 97 98 when did the when did the Virtual Boy come out when did the Virtual Boy come out when did Nintendo Virtual Boy July 21st, 1995 I was close I was close 1995. That's when uh, Nintendo first tried out their virtual reality thing. It was not a pleasant experience, I've heard. I haven't played it myself, never experienced it personally. Um, I don't, I don't, I've never heard good things about it. Ever. You know, I've, I know a few people who have played it. Um, but never, never have they said, yeah, this is like, worth the money that I paid for it other than like as a as a novel uh, experience like like it was definitely not a console 
that you would buy because you wanted to play the games because they were fun. It was a console that you bought because it was a novel concept and, and you wanted to, to have that. Um, even to this day, it, it still is that, you know? If, uh, if you're going to find somebody who has it to sell, <laughs> you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, no, the, it, it can't really call it a, a revolutionary thing because it's been around for a long time. Virtual reality, 3D, you know, these things are not new concepts. It was kind of a, a gradual change to, uh, to, to the world overall as we learned about VR and how to make it kind of really practical in any uh, real sense. Um, it's calling it revolutionary kind of feels wrong, but at the same time it kind of, you know, is revolutionary to how we consume media and especially going forward with um, like just so many things, like especially with COVID, right? Like with, with COVID kind of changing the world as a whole, you know, by and large, um, I think that VR is going to become increasingly more and more prominent in the world. Um, because, like, maybe not even, um, it's not, it's not going to happen immediately, right? It's not going to happen immediately. But, um, I think that VR is definitely going to be kind of the future of, uh, just, like, home computing, you know? Because I think that what's going to be happening is, uh, people are going to start creating things that would work well in virtual reality just because this cat's um, back in the game. like like 3D sort of it's like a um, novel out here. YouTube videos and stuff or, or websites or games or whatever to uh, go to events and um, open houses even you know like all of these kinds of things where you can kind of walk through the house kind of like Google Maps you know um, but for like your house so that you can sell your house and people don't have to come to your house and touch all of your things and get their gross germs all over everything right I think that that's kind of gonna be the natural way forward here as um, as uh, as we kind of get back more in line I think that that's kind of what what the future is gonna hold it's gonna be moving towards more of an online kind of centric lifestyle uh, and and less of a like going to things in person because it's kind of stupid that you would fly to to like RuneFest or something when you can just watch it online in 3D, right? Um, and then kind of the next step that's going to be happening is you're going to have uh, so let's let's talk about like the real estate agencies, right? Um, who are going to be setting up these 3D videos on their websites, right? Um, come on, dude. Uh, what they're going to be doing? This is just my prediction. I could be wrong, but uh, my my prediction is that we're gonna be getting these three D websites on web on like three D websites for viewing houses or concerts or whatever, um, and then you're gonna have at the actual real estate agencies later on. They're gonna be like, you know what would be pretty cool if we were to like rent out VR headsets so you could go look around at uh, at houses or even not rent them out but just like have it there like free to use to anybody who's a prospective buyer um, because that would be good for them, right? To be able to show off the houses and they'd be able to show off more houses in less time, right? Because they wouldn't actually have to be at the house. They wouldn't have to risk things being stolen. They wouldn't have to risk things like contaminated from people coughing or sneezing or whatever. All they'd have to worry about is making sure that the, the VR headset that they uh, are using is clean and sanitary, right? Like that's it. And that's not a very big ask, right? Um, at, at least not if you're not like, like these these people aren't going to be using these headsets and then like getting really physically active and sweating and making a mess of it. Plus, the headsets will probably not be the most comfortable things, um, just uh, to make sure that it, it's it's made out of materials that can be cleaned easily rather than like absorbing stuff, right? Because you're not going to be wearing it for like six hours or whatever, right? Um, so be able to go to these real estate agencies and try on this this headset and they'll show you all of the different houses that they have for sale you'll be able to walk through them and and see what everything looks like and and like pick things up and turn on light switches and stuff you know like it'll be like a walking through the house but you'd, you'd be sitting in a in a chair at a real estate agency and they'd be able to show you more houses at once without having to drive around you don't have to risk of, of covid or, or whatever other kind of pandemic or 
um, scary diseases or even just normal diseases as people realize that hey we should probably be clean and not uh, be gross um, so uh, you know you have these um, where it kind of gets started and in, in those types of things that kind of stuff maybe there'll be some places open for like concert viewing um, maybe um, but it's probably gonna start on the smaller scale where you have fewer people coming in um, at a time just because it'll be easier to clean the, the headsets right and then uh, people start using them and then it'll start to expand from there and become more commonplace is my is my guess that's how I'm gonna expect it to kind of go uh, forward in the future it's gonna it's gonna branch out of like real estate agencies and um, probably uh, yeah, I, I think it really is going to start branching out from real estate agencies. I think that's going to be like how VR kind of propagates mostly. Um, and the reason people will buy it for themselves rather than like just go to the real estate agency will be for the other things where there's just more people going to be like there. You know, like for concerts, you want to watch a concert or whatever. You've already experienced the VR when you were looking at uh, at housing right now now you want your own for, for going to a concert or for just viewing the houses yourself if you want to right um, and then going to maybe conventions or for visiting friends or something like that you know and it's going to kind of propagate out like that but it, I think that it's largely going to stem from real estate agencies and that's probably uh, I don't know if it's true or not but that's that's my estimation of the uh, of the future of VR but I definitely think that um, VR is, is, is going to be kind of uh, going forward, just kind of the future of how home computing works. And it's going to be like, you know, 40 years maybe even before it's it's like very commonplace. But um, I, th I think I think that it's going to be uh, the, the, the norm in, in households at, at a certain point. I definitely I definitely wholeheartedly believe that. Because you already look at, like, uh, so many places are coming out with these, um, like, Facebook's got one. They have, like, these picture frames that you can put out or, or like, you know, specific Money, things designed for just voice chatting with people, right? Video chatting with family, right? How long until they make a, a fairly, like, at a certain point, VR isn't going to be expensive, right? Like, at a certain point, you're going to be able to go to the store and pick up, like, an $80 VR headset that's as good as, like, the Index is today, right? Like, it'll happen eventually. Like, not tomorrow, not next year, but like, event, not there. No, no, wait, wait, stop. <laughs> I thought I was on desolation. I'm not doing containment station. We're doing evacuation station, okay? Maybe 10, 20 years or whatever until it happens. But like, at a certain point, it's not, it's not going to be so expensive. So it won't be unreasonable for you to have it for your family to be able to talk to each other and, and, uh, Uh, like communicate and stuff, you know. Is my is my estimation. I don't think it's gonna be a. It's it's not gonna be quick. Is the thing. But I mean, I don't see the difference between like how people sit down currently at their computer and and how people would uh, just pick up a headset and put it on, you know, sit down on a couch or something. Like it's to me, I f I feel like it's about the same level of of difficulty, you know. Same level of investment, you know. So, um, the time investment, anyway. Um, effort, you know, all that kind of stuff. Not necessarily monetary. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that uh, VR is definitely going to be. And it's not. A lot of people are like, oh yeah, VR is the future. Like this is. You need to get in on this now. Now. I don't. I don't think we're we're at future level VR yet. <laughs> I don't think we're even really close to like future level VR. Um, you know, I, I think that it will be the future. We're not. We're not at a point where we can be like, yeah, you go try this. Like this is the future. You know, like yeah. It's got. It's got a lot more refining to do. It's got a lot more. Um, uh, it's got to get a lot better. It's got to get a lot more comfortable. It's got to get a lot cheaper, lighter, smaller. Um, the tracking has to get better. 
the visual fidelity has to get like way better um, the ease of use has to be significantly improved oculus is not the future oculus will not last if they're gonna be forcing you to log into Facebook it will it will just not um, like it, it, it just it's not gonna it's a bad idea um, They'll make a lot of money off of it for now, though, while they sell how much I'm sweating and what YouTubers I like. Um, but it's it, 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 it's not it's it's not the future. It's 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 gonna die, and you know it's not 20 years from now. It's either not gonna be there or it won't require you to log into Facebook. Um, it's it's not a lasting thing for sure. Um, but uh, come on, dude. Um, yeah, it's just it's, we're not we're not at the point yet where where VR is the future, you know. Future VR will be the future. We're not we're not there yet. It's still laggy. It's, it's still like low frame rates. The fidelity is still bad. There's still a screen door effect. You have to line up your IPD manually, and sometimes it's not even very good at making sure that it's lined up. You have trouble when you're putting on glasses and. Um, you know the audio quality is also like not that great on it at times and. Um, just, just all around, there's like a lot of badness that goes on with, uh, with, um, VR right now. That, that, that makes it just completely not viable for it to be like a commonplace thing. But it, it's also like very early technology still, right? Even though it is a couple of years old at this point, like, uh, since it kind of started to be a thing at all, really. It's a couple of years old now, a few years old, um... It's still very young, right? It's still very early. They're still refining a lot of it, getting figuring out how they can. And you know, screens are making big changes at the moment as well. Um, there's there's just a lot to do on VR before I I'd say that we're like at the point where it's it's gonna happen. I don't think that you could take like a VR headset into every house right now, and everybody would be like, heck yeah. I think that a lot of people would be like, yeah, this is just not for me. You know, like a lot of people are not going to be into it. A lot of people are going to be motion sick or whatever. And you got to get, like, there's just a lot of problems to work out. But I think that uh, 20, 30 years from now, they like a VR headset in house will be fairly common. Even for like doctor's appointments. You know? Even for something as simple as that. It'll, it'll be a while though. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people are a lot more optimistic about the future of VR and, and how it's going to be like, you know. Yeah, it's like four years away from like supremacy. Nah. Funny, it? No, we're like four years away from like enthusiasts, like you know, PC enthusiasts, from generally having VR. Right now, there's there's like a, a VR enthusiast subgroup within PC enthusiasts, you know, and and it kind of overlaps with with console people and, and just in general people who like VR. Um. But but most people do not have it. It's it's a very small percentage of people that actually own VR. Make a very small percentage. Um, and I I think that maybe in four or five years it'll be a much bigger percentage within PC uh, gaming statistics. So if you look at like Steam statistics, like who owns VR, I think that the number will be maybe even in the majority in five years for uh, for like you know Steam hardware stuff perhaps I would uh, I wouldn't expect it but I wouldn't be surprised about it either um, but I think we're like five years away from like that you know it's it's still quite a bit of time before we go to like you know the average person has one because the average person isn't a, isn't a PC gamer you know the average person is a uh, is like a TV watcher <laughs> you know like they, they, even even then like yeah, no. Pe people don't really care about VR because it doesn't really matter. Um, but but it'll 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 start to take over. I think. Anyway, the moral of the story is that I'm just like so excited for it to finally finally get here after uh, you know a week and a half <laughs> of waiting. But I'm really excited. I hope it comes earlier. I really really truly genuinely do. It comes in uh, eight days, so next Friday. It's not far away. It's not far away. The, the scary thing about a delivery estimate that is a Friday, of course, 
is you could have like a 20 minute delay in traffic <laughs> at, at like any point along the line that ends up pushing it to Monday because you know if it doesn't get on the Friday shipment because like it got delayed and something else got there before them and then the person who was going to do the delivering was like alright I'll take all this stuff and then my package just didn't end up getting on that because it was delayed by 20 minutes you know it doesn't come the next day because they're not working on Saturday or Sunday it comes on Monday you know and then depending on how uh, they handle all of the stuff it might come like late Monday so it's like uh, any small delay could really put a damper in uh, how soon I get it for sure um, but uh, you know it's okay it's not it's not that much of a wait anyway right it's not really that long of a wait to be uh, completely honest but it's it's like it feels like it's such a long wait because I just I want it here now <laughs> I want it now you know I don't want to wait I don't want to wait dude I want it now I'm so excited I'm gonna be playing so many games be <laughs> playing so many games on uh, in VR. I'm be playing Minecraft in VR if I can. You know, I have to figure out if I can get uh, the uh, like Oculus Link stuff working because I don't have an Oculus Link cable. But it is again. I just I, I believe it's just a USB three cable or a USB C cable. Um, as long as it can handle the data or whatever, like you're fine, you're good to go, kind of thing. I don't I don't think that it really is a fancy cable. It's just a you know, it's just it's just a USB-C cable with some Velcro on it. Is all it is. Oh come on, that totally hit you in the chest. Don't even. Um. Plus, there's also a virtual desktop, so you can do it wirelessly. But I don't know how the latency is going to be on that. And it, I think you might require Wi-Fi on the computer as well, which I don't have. But um. Yeah, whatever. You know, it's it's fine. It's fine. When you're trying it out, I'd love to play Minecraft in VR though. That sounds like a ton of fun. It sounds like a ton of fun. It sounds like terrifying and uh, probably like a lot of motion sickness, <laughs> for sure. But I'm hoping I don't get. I'm, hope, I'm hoping I'm not one of those people that gets motion sick in VR. Cause it sucks. You know, go go spend like 500 bucks on a VR headset and then you can't even enjoy it. But uh, it's the risk you take. I don't think I am. And I think even if I am, I'll just kind of like get used to it. For the most part, <laughs> just kind of force my way through it. So I want to, I want to enjoy it. So I want to enjoy it. Also, um, we'll talk about it more in the next episode if I remember. But Intel kind of just got pretty beat down. I don't know if you all saw the uh, the AMD release, but like, ooh, Ryzen, uh, Ryzen uh, third gen, the 5000 series stuff is. Uh, it's pretty good, <laughs> to say the least. It's pretty good. Uh, Intel's in a bit of a bad position on that one. Bit of a bad position, for sure, but, you know. Anyway, that's going to do it for today, so thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like it, subscribe, see more in the future, comment if you have anything to say, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.